impressive were my Titans on Tuesday? Be honest. You were blown away by how uh, unbelievable we were. I was very surprised. You know, I thought if you if you look at the matchups, you have one team who has practiced and prepared, and one team that hasn't practiced and prepared and is down. Um, you know, not not a bunch of starters, but you know enough guys to make practice more difficult, right? You know, pass rusher, important pass rusher. Um, it was it was very impressive. And it was the first time all year the Titans looked like the team we saw from last year, right? right? For four quarters, there were times this year they looked that way, but not totally. And maybe you know, just maybe it forced them to get back to basics, just do what they did last year, right? Run the ball, punch a bunch of play action pass. Um, you know, defensively. Oh, they had a really good game plan that they used against Lamar Jackson and against Pat Mahomes last year, which was basically like, don't get beat deep. We'll take anything underneath. You know, Josh Allen, he's had a good start of the year, but he's not really good enough yet to probably score a bunch of points on that type of defense. We're just methodical. Just take what the defense gives you. Um, no mistakes. He's not there quite yet. I think, obviously, Pat Mahomes can do that much better than he can. So, it was really good. And maybe it was just kind of getting back to, to basics. And they looked really good. When you when I give you this stat, um, and, and I think you're going to be blown away, how good is uh, Ryan Tannehill been since becoming the Titans starter? Ryan Tannehill and Patrick Mahomes, both 11-3 and three in their last 14. I don't know if you saw that. Passing did, yards. Yeah. 3,602 for Tannehill, 3,674 for Mahomes. 31 touchdowns for Tannehill, six interceptions, 28 and six for Mahomes. And Tannehill has a better passer rating. That's staggering, I think, to most people who are out there listening. Uh, how good can, can Tannehill be at this point? Is, he, uh, is it a better risk now in your mind, the Titans made, that he's maybe not, and obviously health is a factor. I mean, everybody can always get injured. But from a pure player perspective, are you starting to think that maybe there's a consistency from Tannehill that wasn't just a 12-game flash in the pan last year? I mean, it, it appears there is. Right? I mean, it's hard to argue anything otherwise. Um, he's doing a really good job. And I think that the larger story, in my opinion, is the – the offensive play callers in the NFL, including Arthur Smith, uh, who's the Titans uh, play caller. Um, and you can even look to Brian Dabble, the Bills play caller, and look at a guy, offensive coordinators who design offenses that fit what the quarterbacks do best. I think we've never been in a time where this, been, where this happened more often in the NFL. A lot of times we see, you know, quarterback coaches and play callers um, make their quarterback fit their offense. I think now more than ever, the other's happening, right? Where the coordinator is, is making their offense fit around the quarterback. And what they're doing, Tannehill is saying, hey, look, man, we're not going to be in five watts. We're not going to be in, in a quick passing game. We're going to do a play action pass. We're going to do bootlegs. We're going to get you on the move. You know, we're going to make sure that you're throwing high percentage throws that work best for what you do well, which he has got a good arm and you limit his reads when he is doing play action pass. And so I think mean that, that the play caller, Arthur Smith, deserves credit for it. And Ryan Tannehill obviously is executing the game plan. And I think that's really important. And, and they're doing a good job of that. And it's impressive. Yeah, I do not think he'd be this good again in year two. I mean, the Derrick Henry deal is going to be stupid, which I thought it was going to be and already. He's not been good this year. And maybe you could say he'll be good at the end of the season. But, I mean, they're winning in spite of him. They did the same thing last year. It does, it's, Ryan Tannehill is, the off, is, is what makes this offense go. And if he's playing at that level that he is, uh, it's going to be hard to stop this team. Biggest games going on this weekend in the NFL. To me, there are a couple that, that kind of stand out. The Browns on the road against the Steelers. Steelers around a three-and-a-half point favorite. What do you expect to see in this game? The Browns have won four in a row. The Steelers are 4-0 and oh for the first time in 41 years. What happens? Yeah, I think the Steelers win this game. Um, I'm a little concerned about Baker Mayfield's ribs. He didn't practice yesterday, and he took a pretty big shot to the ribs. And even if he's healthy, um, I'm not sure he's he's good enough to kind of play at 75 percent and play a good game. If you look at the Browns; they've been really good. They're four and one. I love watching them play. Right, they're offensive line centric. They run the football. Um, Baker Mayfield has not been a big reason why. They've been winning games. He, he's not making mistakes this year, which is really good. And again, they're scheming up, same as, as what I talked about with, with Tennessee. They're scheming up easy throws for him. But he's not been the reason they've won. Now, if you put him at kind of 75% and a really good pass defense in Pittsburgh, 
I think he'll struggle a little bit. Uh, and plus, I'm, I've been playing Pittsburgh all year. They've been one of my favorite plays to, to, have, to play all year. I bet on them a bunch this season as well. Um, they're just really good football team, and their offense is just getting better each and every week. So I think, I think Pittsburgh wins this game, um, and I'm excited to watch it. The first time in, what, forever we are excited to watch Steelers-Browns play. No, no doubt. Uh, a couple other big games going on this weekend in the NFL, and we're talking with Jeff Schwartz, former NFL offensive lineman. Our, one of our NFL insiders been joining us on the show for, for a long time. Packers Bucks, uh, the Green Bay Packers. It's been basically a fifty-fifty game, uh, kind of the entire uh, week so far in the uh, in the odds market. How do you see Packers Bucks shaking out? Yeah, man, this is a game. I, I don't have a great feel. I need to go. I need to go through and, and study this game more. I mean, I, I feel like I, I, I'm always kind of. I've always been a Tom Brady guy, and so I look at a, at a poor performance on Thursday, uh, and now think like, okay, well. Poor performance. I think he's going to come back and and play really well. But he's not in New England anymore, right? Like those are the things that we look for when he played with with, with the Bucks. Uh, excuse me, with the Pats. Now he's with the Bucks, where they have an undisciplined team, right? They commit a ton of penalties still. Um, offensively, I think their offensive line is really good, but played pretty poorly the other day. Um, I, I really want to take the Pat, uh, the, the, the Bucks here, I should say, but. I'm not. I'm just not sure. I, I don't know which side to go with. I don't know where to lean on this one. I mean, Green Bay's playing really good football. They're off a bye as well. Um, they're probably the better team at the moment. Um, so I, I guess I would lean Green Bay just because they're, they're they're just better right now. But I, I wouldn't count out Tom Brady either. This is why I'm, I have no idea. Who, I'm not betting this game. I, I think the over is the play, if anything. But I have no idea. Who's going to win? Doubleheader Monday Night Football, and I know again it's not uh, it's not happening this weekend, and we'll be talking about these games as well on Monday. But Chiefs, Bills, Cardinals, Cowboys, what happens in those two? Yeah, so Chiefs and Bills is really interesting, right? Because both teams are off a, a, a bad loss, um, and it's funny. There's a lot of hand wringing over the Chiefs offense. I mean, they're still averaging like thirty points a game. I mean, they're not <laughs> they're not doing that bad. Um, I think for the Chiefs defense, it was a wake up call against the Raiders. Like, hey. Um, we've been playing really well, and I think we kind of kind of kind of got a little, kind of, kind of little laxed, and it, it cost us. Um, we saw too that Tennessee did a really good job on defense of just keeping everything in front of them. Hey, Josh Allen, you're not going to beat us deep, right? We're going to keep everything in front of us and just methodically make you try to beat us. I think mean, the Chiefs will do that to them as well. I and mean, the Chiefs are just, I just, I wouldn't the way that the Chiefs have played over the years. Um, I would just wouldn't count them out after a loss. I think they're going to come out renewed, focused. Um, and I think they win that game. As far as the other the other game, I'm, uh, what, it's, it's Cardinals Cowboys, right? Which yep. started the season looked like a great matchup, right? But Arizona hasn't played as well as we thought. Obviously, Dak got hurt. Um, I think that I, I'm really curious to see Andy Dalton in that offense. I think Andy Dalton could do really well, but their offensive line is just is so beat up. The Cowboys' offensive line. Um, I think Arizona probably wins this game just because, too, the Cowboys' defense still sucks. I mean, so if you go from if you score one less touchdown a game with Andy Dalton instead of Dak on offense, you're going to lose the game because the Cowboys defense can't stop a soul. So I go with Arizona here. I know they're a short road favorite, not always a great bet, but I think Arizona probably wins that game. Good stuff as always. Jeff Schwartz, we will talk to you next week. Uh, Good luck with the kids this morning.